Kingdom people, Kingdom people, Kingdom people. Hello, my name is Pastor Lakivia Amy. And it's Pastor Brenda Spann. And together we are Kingdom People, Real Reality, and we love. Uh, we just thank you for jo <laughs> for joining us. We thank you for joining us. We have another powerful message, and we just hope that you guys really uh, get something out of the message that you'll be able to apply it to your everyday life. Right? Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. I'm excited. We're gonna be talking about follow me. Follow Pick up me. your cross. Picking up your cross. <laughs> bearing your cross. Yeah, bearing your cross. <laughs> hallelujah. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, in the name of yes. Jesus. Lord, we thank you. You said in your word that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believe in you shall not perish but have everlasting yes. life. Yes. We thank you for abundant life, God. Yes. We thank you for a life within you, God. Yes, Lord. Lord, we honor you. We lift you up. We glorify you, Lord. We give you praise and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Yes, we had to pick up our cross. Pick up our Take cross. up our cross. Yes. Okay. Jesus carried a cross. And guess what? In return, we can do the same thing. Take up our cross and do what's right. Yes. And die to self daily. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. We're coming out of Matthew 16, verse 24 through 23. Yes. Take up your cross. Is yes. anybody willing to take up their cross? Are you willing, Pastor oh, Brenda? I'm willing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm willing. I'm doing it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, many times people... Uh, I was I was studying it. I think mm -hmm. I thought that too. Well, you know, when we talk about uh, how you been doing, oh, I'm just bearing my cross. Sickness and disease, they think that's yeah, bearing the cross. Bearing cross. And that's not yeah. bearing your cross. No. That, that's not bearing your cross. It's not about sorrow and pain. No, it's not. No. No, no, it's not. It's about dying to self daily. Dying to self daily. Dying to the lust of the flesh. Dying yes. to the lust of the eyes. Dying to the pride of life. Yes. Anything that's contradicting uh, towards Jesus, we need to just say no. We just need to say, say no. no. Yes. I love it that First Peter talks about how a uh, uh, view uh, them that have ceased from sin is suffering in the flesh. Yes. If you are suffering in your flesh, you have ceased for sins because a lot of time temptation brings forth stress and yes. our desires bring forth stress. I mean, mm -hmm. I recall uh, you know wanted to uh, see a mate, see see a male. And I can see him. I can see him. And and the Lord was saying, No, 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 no. You know, I have. Sometimes when God removes someone out of our lives, we want to bring them back in. Yes. And I knew God had removed this male out of my mm. life. And I knew He did. But yes, the flesh was saying, But I still want to talk to Him. Flesh, I still yeah. want to see Him. And I'm saying, No, no. God already told me I removed. And so I'm battling with my flesh. Yes. I'm dying to. Uh, what God has already told me, I removed it out of your life. And so now my flesh is battling with God's will. So you had to die and take up your cross. I had to die and take up my cross. And do what God was telling you to do. Oh my goodness. Be and obedient. do what, what God has told me to do. Yes. Which is not always the easiest thing to do. Yes. No. Yes. It's not. It's not. And so we have to know that. I love it that... Um, I was just looking at the, the scripture, and maybe we're going to read the scripture, but it was a process. First, he tells you you have to take up your cross, and then you have to bear your cross. Yes. Okay? And so then, you after you bear your cross, then you have to walk with your cross. Yes. And I was thinking about how many men uh, and women as well that yes. are in jail, that are, that are innocent, and yet has uh, given has been given a life sentence to. Yes. And I think that, that was like something equal to uh, of Jesus because Jesus, what he Jesus you know, he, he he when he carried his own cross and he was crucified, he had no sin, he didn't do anything, no. but yet uh, they still proclaim him to be guilty. Yes. And many men and women that are doing life sentences in jail or uh, whatever it may be and has is, is innocent. A lot of people are innocent and doing life. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that's like, you know, equivalent to Jesus being innocent. Everything that Jesus went through. Being innocent. He was mm -hmm. innocent and yet he was crucified. But, you know, I love it that um, him bearing his own cross wasn't about him, but it was all about us. Yes. Oh, somebody <laughs> needed to get excited. It was yes, all yes, about yes. us. I love it that, and I'm going to bring this scripture up. Uh, it says in Colossians 
2 15 it said and having disarmed the powers and the authority he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over the cross yes, triumphing yes, over the yes. cross and so we we know and as we wear the cross we're not wearing the cross as for uh, as uh, I don't wear my it's, it's symbolic as rem, it reminds me of the crucifixion of Christ and I see a lot of people may wear crosses with Christ on the cross he is not on the cross anymore mm -hmm. he's not on the cross and so it's a symbolic of me reminding myself of his crucifixion and him triumphing over the cross yes yes and and what we uh, how we came into play and what we benefited before um, because of his crucifixion. You know, we, we were redeemed back to God. We was reconciled back to God when we were separated from God. We had the we was doomed to die and go to hell. But because of what Christ did, he redeemed us. He redeemed oh, he, us. We, he, he was our ransom. And so yes. I'm just, I'm, not, I'm excited. Okay, so we're coming out of Matthew 16, verse 24 through 23. Okay. And it says, Then Jesus said to the disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must. He must. Not he, he might need to but he must <laughs> he must, <laughs> he must yes. deny himself yes and um, take up his cross and follow me yes yes and let me read verse 25 because it says for whoever wants to save his life will lose it mm -hmm. but whoever loses his life for me will find it okay yes. and in verse 26 he says what good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world yes. but yet fortifies his soul yes what good would it be to not bear your cross? Yes. To indulge in the pleasures of this world mm -hmm. and end up fortifying your soul. Yes, yes. And so basically what it's saying, we have to, we have to, as believers, it's not a, I might have to, or maybe, or when I feel like it, but we must, we must mm -hmm. deny ourselves. Yes, yes. As believers of the Most High, we must deny ourselves. And not only do we have to deny ourselves, um, sometimes, it's not just sometimes, but it has to be a daily. Yes. It has to be a part of our daily diet, mm -hmm. a daily routine, something that we do from this day on. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's not something that we just do whenever we feel like doing it. Yes, yes. And we have to remember that obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes, it is. Okay? Um, it's not about our sacrifice. It's about being obedient to the Word of God. And he says, you must deny yourself, then we have to deny ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, in this chapter here, um, Jesus was, uh, he was reprimanding, um, uh, Peter, Peter, and, yes. and, and Jesus was predicting his his death. He was telling them that he was going to be handed over. And then, right in this chapter here, we see that Jesus was telling them that you know he must go and be arrested, and he made and the rulers was going to put him to death. And yes. Peter stepped in and said, "Oh no, Lord, we no, this won't happen." Yes. And then God and Jesus rebuked him. Rebuked and so Peter. then Jesus turned okay. around and told him. Uh, Jesus turned around and told him that, you know, that unless you pick up your cross, you will not be my disciples. And so we see here that uh, God was basically telling them, this is what I'm going to have to go through. And it's just, as I have to go through this here, you're going to have to. It was some more like symbolic of what, he, what, what we would have to go through. And so I, I love it. In Philippians 2 and 7, it talks about... Uh, he said, instead, he gave up his divine privilege because the main reason why Jesus came, he came to die for the sins of the people. Okay. Yes, and yes. so uh, the Bible said he emptied himself. Okay. He, he wrapped himself in flesh yes. and came down yes. here to die for us. For and said, instead, he gave up his divine privilege. He took the humble position of a slave. Yes. Okay, and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal death on a cross. And I'm reminded when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he, uh, when uh, before they came to arrest him, the Bible says that um, you know he began to weep and say, you know, Lord, please let this cup pass me by. But he said, yes. but but better that better yet, not my will. But your will be done. Your will. And so, yet he followed the will of his father. And so we are, as an example, we are to follow 
Christ. Christ. And I'm reminded in First Corinthians where um, Paul, when he's told, um, told it was a it was a really big old thing going around where division has came yes. into place into the church. And he said, "Well, who follow?" He said, "Who who you follow?" He said, "You follow Paul." He said, "Another one may uh, follow Apollos, and one may follow Cephas, and other may follow Christ." But he said, Did, "Was was I? Was Paul? Was you baptized in Paul name? Did Paul die for you?" He said, "No, Jesus did." He said, "I thank God that I <laughs> baptized none of you." Okay, <laughs> and so we see that today, sister, that many people are, get sort of uh, uh, disfocused from following God, following the cross following Jesus and they begin to start following the preacher start Leaders. following the prophet yes. you know, I'm going where the prophet is at no yes. you go where Jesus yes. is at you go to church and, and so many people get to talking about church and I say you know what sometimes if I don't see you it's not that I'm ignoring you because I'm here to seek Jesus I'm here to get a word from the Lord and sometimes we are so focused on what's around us that we lose focus on the message we lose focus of why we're here and so oh hallelujah and so Jesus said to follow 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 him and so if Jesus when he say follow him He's not talking about the same follow that we follow on Instagram, that we follow <laughs> on Facebook, or we follow on Snapchat. Yeah. I have seen people, oh, you know, on their, you know, uh, live screaming themselves and say, you know, I just thank you for following me. Jesus is not talking about that type of follow. He's not talking about, you know, following prestige or uh, fame or uh, 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 prosperity or whatever. He's talking about picking up your cross, denying yourself, denying the flesh. Denying your desires of, of what how the world the world says it's okay to fornicate. He said, deny yourself. Oh, how I know I'm talking to somebody today. He said the world said it's, it's okay to lie. He said, deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Okay? Deny the flesh. Or with the flesh. Deny the flesh when they want to be tempted to yes. sin. Yes, yes. Okay? And so we know that. On the way to Golgotha, on the way to the hill, okay, and I talked about how it was a process, picking up your cross, yes. carrying your cross, walking to the cross, walking to where you will be executed. And when Jesus spoke this to the disciples, they knew, sister, they knew what it meant. They knew that when he said pick up your cross, they knew it had something to do with crucifixion. And the Bible yes. talks about many follow him. Many follow him. They follow him. Uh, uh, one scripture talks about how they fo follow him. Matthew 16 talks about how they follow him uh, because they wanted food. Okay. Many people didn't follow Christ because they wanted to, they wanted to be their disciples. Wanted to be his disciples. Many follow him because they was wanted to be healed. John 6, 26 says, Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs. I perform, but because you ate the loaves and have you been filled. See, many people are looking for what God can do for them. They want to follow Jesus, have a temporary follow. Yes. Okay, they want to look. They want to follow. Oh, just I want to follow him long enough for me to be healed, long enough for him to give me what I want. But I don't want to be a lifetime follower of Christ. And Christ said, No, 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 no. Unless you bear your own cross, you cannot be his disciple. Oh, hallelujah. And I like how he says, you cannot be my disciple. Yes. If you're not willing to bear your cross, you cannot be his disciple. Yes. And so that lets me know that there's a lot of people who, are, who think they're disciples and not disciples. Mm -hmm. They won't, mm -hmm. you said they won't bear their cross, but they're saying, hey, I'm a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. When he says, no, you cannot uh, be my disciple. Mm -hmm. I want to go to Luke 9, verse 57 to 62. It, it is a, it's it's going to cost you something to follow Christ. Mm -hmm. It costs you something. Okay. He says... And it says, as they were walking along the road, a man said to, said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. This man was speaking of Jesus. And Jesus replied, foxes have holes and birds of the air have a nest. But the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Mm -hmm. okay? And in verse 59, he said to another man, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. <laughs> and Jesus said, let the dead bury let the, the dead, dead and proclaim the God's... Um, the, um, and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yes. And then still another said, I will follow you. And Lord, uh, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me go and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus replied, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Yes. So basically anybody who puts everything before Christ is not fit for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and what I like about this, two of these guys came to him and said, I want to follow you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look, God has to choose us. Yes. <laughs> He's the one who chooses us, so we don't choose him. Mm -hmm. And those who thought that they can just choose to follow him on their own, look, they didn't, um, they wasn't fit. Yes. For the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But when he called the disciples, they got up in the 12 who he picked. Yes. They got up immediately. Yes. yes. Scripture <laughs> says that they got up immediately yes. okay yes. they got up immediately yes. and you can find that in uh, matthew um 4 18 verse 21 jesus said to um peter let me turn to it he said he turned it was peter mm -hmm. peter and they, they was out fishing and he said come follow me i will make you fishers of men and that's in matthew 4 um, 18 through 21 they stopped working they stopped their job that was their livelihood that's what they did for for a living he said, I will make you fishers of men. Yes. And they followed him immediately. Yes. And I think about Matthew, the tax collector. When Jesus saw him, he was sitting in a tax collector booth. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was considered as a sinner. Jesus, the people thought Jesus was wrong for talking to him because he was a sinner. Mm -hmm. And we know that the tax collectors were cheating people out of money. Yes. But Jesus told Matthew, he said, follow me. Mm -hmm. Immediately, he followed Jesus. Immediately, he stopped. Look, he was bearing his cross. He was bearing his cross. He stopped. Uh, cheating people out of money. Yes. He feels sorry about what he was doing to people. And he said he was going to repay them back. <laughs> and he said he was to repay the people yes. back. So that was bearing his cross. Yes. And he stopped what he was doing immediately and followed Christ. Yes. And sometimes, when, well, not sometimes, but all the time, when, a lot of times when um, we're talking about bearing our cross, we can have, our plans are not like God's plans. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll have a, our, a plan for our life, but it can be totally contrary to the plan of God. And if we got to pick up our cross, take mm -hmm. up our cross, mm -hmm. and die to our own plans and say, God, it's your plans. Yes. What are your plans for me? It's your will, not my will. Mm -hmm. You got to lose something, yes. but you end up gaining Dang a whole lot. You end up gaining so much more. And I think about the disciples, they lost, they, um, they lost, they had to leave their families instantly. They didn't get a chance to go and say goodbye. They just got up and they followed Christ. Mm -hmm. They didn't get a chance to go and say, okay, we're no longer explain to everybody. We're no longer uh, going to do this job. we got to leave our jobs right now so we can go and follow Christ. Mm -hmm. And they really didn't even know who he was at the time. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, being all-knowing, knew that he would, they would follow him. Yeah. And they did just that. But they, they gained so much more than what they had. Yes, they did. They, mm -hmm. they, they, really, they really did. You know, um, following us, uh, following Jesus... Following Jesus, sometimes you have to humble yourself when you don't want to humble yourself. Yes. Oh my goodness. Following Jesus when you when you have to give when you don't want to give. Okay? That's picking up your cross. That's following Jesus. Yes. You know, one thing about the um the the um some of the followers so the teaching that Jesus did, a lot of them did not understand his teaching. And especially when he would begin to talk about how, um, oh, you must eat my flesh and drink my blood. Yes. A lot of them was like, whoa, this is, just, this is too deep for me. <laughs> they, they didn't understand, they didn't understand mm -hmm. this. And uh, the Bible said that many people that follow Christ, uh, when they seen him uh, be uh, bearing his cross, and going to the cross to be crucified, they didn't really understand what was really going on. The Bible says that many of them went back to their own occupation. A lot mm -hmm. of them did not follow Christ. And we have to, regardless of what we see, okay, what we go through, we have to know that Christ is who he say he is. Yes, we have we to have believe to every word the Bible speaks of Christ in his in his resurrection. And so many of them went back to their occupation. But when they seen hallelujah the resurrection Christ <laughs> and when the Holy Spirit came upon them on the day of Pentecost they got on fire and they followed Christ in spite of them knowing that uh, it was a possibility of they may be facing death when you follow in Christ you're going to lose some friends you're going to lose some family members you're going to lose some popularities uh, you may rumors may wrinkle out when you follow Jesus you may lose some things but like Pastor Amy said if you lose those things you will gain back what you have lost so, amen and so i'm saying this that uh during our journey we're going to encounter some things and we may feel like uh that god is not with us and that we're walking this walk by our alone by ourselves we're bearing our cross by ourselves but god is with you god is there he said i will be with you until the ends of the earth we have to trust god we have to trust God. And trusting God sometimes is not about what we see out of our eyes. No. Uh, even how no. we feel. 
You yes. know, we have to know in spite of, because honey, I'm telling you, someone, I might feel like they stay in bed, and some days I may wake up and I may feel like I'm on fire for God, and sometimes I'm feeling like, girl, I'm just barely pressing myself, but I have to say within myself, Brenda, God is who he say he is. Yes. And in spite of this flesh not wanting to do or feel a certain way, you must pray, you must serve God, and you must stay focused on the prize. We have a prize. We have a prize. Yes. And that prize, hallelujah, is eternal life. <laughs> that prize is is salvation. And you know what? It took something for Christ to die on that cross. It, he wasn't just a regular person of dying on the cross. He was separated from his father. First time separated from his father. You know, he took on the sins, all the sins that we have had. He took on the sins of the people. And, all, and then the Bible says there's nothing that we have encountered in this flesh that he did not encounter, but yet he did not sin. He was tempted in all way, the book of Hebrews said, but yet he did not sin. The type of torment that we go through, uh, experiencing how the enemy tries to come up against us, God has experienced it and he overcame it. And so yes. we know that if he overcame it, he overcame it. We have the spirit of God, the indwelling spirit, the Holy Spirit that lives within us in us, the same spirit that raised Jesus up from the dead. If he overcame it and we have the indwelling spirit, we can overcome it too, sister. That's true. We can overcome true. anything in this earth. Because of why? Because we are kingdom children. And we have the spirit of the living God living within us. Yes. And so what I think about too is like uh, dying to self daily. We had, we had to, uh, we don't, look, when we accepted Christ Jesus, we were basically saying I died to myself. Yes. I am a new creation. Oh, yes. My old man has passed away. Behold, it's the new. Yes. I'm a new creation in, in Christ Jesus. Yes. Okay. So guess what? We... We um we died we had to die to self even to do that. Yes. But in the process of dying, we became new creations yes. in Christ. Hallelujah. So we lost something, but we gained something. We gained. We gained. Okay, like you said, we was before we was on our way to um to a dark place. Yes. You know, lake of fire. Yes. But now we've inherited um, eternal life. Yes. Yes. Okay, the before we. About, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I'm sorry. The Bible talks about oh, yeah, how our man is, uh, is uh, dying daily. Our inward man has been renewed yes. daily. Yes. Hallelujah. And so we have to, um, even some of the decisions, uh, our life is not our own. We belong to, to the Lord. We are in his hand. We have, nobody can separate us from his love or pluck us out of his hand. And so our life is not even our own. No. We don't own ourselves. No. We have been bought with a price. Yes. We have a master. Yes. Okay, we are slaves of righteousness. And so what happens is we... It is God's will for us to, to, to die to self too daily because we can't do things the way we used to do it. We're no. under new ownership. Yes. Hallelujah. We're under new ownership. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, when you're under new ownership, you do things different. Yes. If I was to go and get a job, if I get a new boss, I don't do things the way I did it with my own no, boss. No. My new boss is going to let me know how I'm supposed to do everything. Yes, yes. Okay, which is pleasing to the new boss. Yes. And some of the things I learned from the old boss is just going to be wrong. It's so I gotta, be wrong. He, I got to be retrained <laughs> yes. because it's new boss. Yes. So it's the same thing. And so we had to take up our cross daily. I had to take up my cross recently. Somebody told me that it was more than one way to the Father. Mm. And it was a believer. And I had to die to self. Yes. Because <laughs> usually I wouldn't say anything. Yes. But I had to die to self and say, no, that's not true. That's not true. I had to take up my cross and stand on the Word of God. This is what the Word of God says. Yes. Yes. If you say that you are a believer and a convert, you have been converted, you know, that you are a follower of Christ. How can you believe that there's more than one way no. to the Father when Scripture plainly tells us that there's only one, no way. one way? And that way is through Jesus Christ. It's only one who was who was capable of of, of dying for our sins, and that's yes. Jesus. Yes. God not, look, God did not send multiple people here to die for our sins. He sent one, yes. his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. his, Jesus is his first fruit. Nobody else is his first fruit. Yes. De Jesus is the door to our salvation. Nobody yes. else. It's only through Christ yes. that we have... Um, that we have peace, that we have, um, we are now reconciled back to the Father. Yes. It is. It's not through any through somebody else. It's not through multiple names that no. we have victory. No. It's not through multiple multiple names that we have gained salvation. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is only through Christ Jesus. And I had to bear my cross. Yeah. And I didn't know what she was going to say. I really didn't care about what she had to say. 
And so I had to die to being a people pleaser. Yeah. Yes. That's a bear yes. my cross. Hallelujah. It's not about pleasing this lady. Mm -hmm. She sent you a, a, a preacher of the gospel. Then you should be speaking the truth. It should be coming out of your mouth. And what's coming out of your mouth is a lie. Yes, yes, yes. You know, that, that's not the yes. truth. And so by the time I finished, I had to, by me bearing my cross, by the time I finished, she said, you know what, I thank you for encouraging me, sister. Yes, 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 yes. I wasn't afraid to bear my cross. Yes. I'm like, that's, that's just, it's not right. And if, as believers, we have to bear our cross. We have to take up our cross and say, hey, I'm not going to be afraid. Yes. To, to preach the gospel. Amen. Okay. I'm not going to be afraid and I'm not going to be ashamed of who I serve. I'm a witness here in this earthly realm, and if somebody come in contact with me, they need to know that God is in me, yes. and that I am of God, and that I have been sent. Mm -hmm. And how would they know that? By my fruit. By your fruit. In order for, for fruit to be produced, we've got to bear a cross. Mm -hmm. They say you know them by your fruit. You know them by their fruits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. You know, I, I was dropped in my spirit just now that many wants to wants the benefit of the inheritance of Christ, but don't want to know him. Don't yeah. want to, see, mm -hmm. because I, I say this, because how can you say uh, that you are a child of God when you don't even pick up your Bible and read, yeah. when you don't pray to him? Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't go and marry someone that I did not know, okay? You yes. have to know about Jesus. You got to know what he likes. That's true. You have to know what he don't like. You got to <laughs> know what the word of God say. Many times, many, many, and I have to say many, many believers sit in church Sunday after Sunday and don't pick up their Bible and only believe what the word of the preacher say. And see, the preacher could be feeding you all types of stuff. We know by history all type of stuff has happened because of people not studying their word for themselves. Yes. And the Bible said, can the blind lead the blind? No. He said, no, because both of them will fall into the ditch. So what I'm saying here, you want the benefits of the inheritance of Christ or what he did on the cross. But you have to know all about him. You have to read your Bible. You have to be disciplined in the things of God. I'm talking to someone today. Yes. God is calling you to fast. God is calling you to pray. And you, you, you just said, oh, I can just, you know, know Christ. I can just confess that I'm a believer. But you have to do more than that. If you want a deep understanding, a deep revelation, a deep relationship with God, you have to know about him. you got to pick up your Bible, and you have to read, and you have to study to show yourself approved. Yeah. A workman needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is how you know who God really is. And see, uh, I, I see many people say, you know what, I wish I can do this. I wish I can hear from God. You can but you have to do something. Okay? But some people want they don't want to bear their cross, but they, they want, want to hear from God. They want to hear from God. Okay, why would you want to hear from a God whose curse you don't want to take up? Yes, yes. You know, he's saying take up your cross or you won't even you're not even fit for my kingdom. Yes. And you can't even be my disciple. Yes. A lot of people want the gifts but don't want the relationship. They don't want the relationship. But you got to bear your cross. Mm -hmm. And it's not about works either. No, it's not about works. And it's not about the gifts. Yes. Okay, it's about relationship. Relationship. But we have to, even for your mind to be renewed, you got to um, take up your cross. Yeah, take up your cross. Because you got to be willing to die to self. Because mm -hmm. once you learn that what your your way of thinking is contrary to God's way it's of thinking. It's carnality. Yeah, mm -hmm. your carnal way of thinking is yeah. is is um, opposes the things of God. Yes. Then you got to die to self. Yeah, die to self. And say, not my will, but your will, Father. It's not yes. my way. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so um, we thank you for the um, for watching. And I hope that you got. I pray that you got something out of the lesson. Healing Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. I pray that they receive uh, thirty, sixty, and one hundred more than what they receive, as they apply it to their life, Father, and that they'll be able to produce. Uh, righteous fruit. Yes, In Lord. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My name is Pastor Lakivia Amy. And Pastor Brenda Spann. And together we are Kingdom People, Real Reality, and we thank you for watching. Hallelujah.